Welcome to r slash Entitled People, where we share stories from your lives about people who think the rules don't apply to them, and they should get what they want. Thank you friends for subscribing to the channel, and for so many likes. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story. The new teacher wants my job, but I didn't give up and I won. The second story. I went through with it and quit when they told me they were going to get rid of her, and it feels good. The third story. I quit on the spot and my boss called the cops. The first story is, Entitled woman tries and fails to take my job. This is a long story, and it started quite a few years ago. So I'm an instructor at a small college. I teach artsy vocational classes and only have an MFA, and my school really favors more academic PhDs. This was all told to me when I was hired, but the dean at the time was incredibly kind about this and gave me a secret boost in pay to make up for the lack of favor. She told me that even though I would never be promoted, my area of expertise was valued, and as long as I stayed in my lane, I was very welcome. So before I ever got tenure, I worked for a few years and developed a slate of very popular classes that filled every semester. I was very happy and grateful to have the job. Titles mean nothing to me and I was just happy to be successful at a job I love that helped people. I also learned very quickly never to step on the toes of more senior faculty. I stayed in my lane. Then a woman was hired in another subgroup of my department. I never met her nor was I involved in her hiring. She had nothing to do with me but she does have a PhD. Then before I ever met her, I saw on her social media that she announced that she would soon be teaching all my classes and she was delighted to be doing that. I was shocked because I went through a rigorous hiring process and I am exceptionally qualified to teach in my area. She has no publications in my area and her degrees are only vaguely related to my area. I figured my chair would put her in her place but I was wrong. Instead I was called into the chair's office and told, EW is very interested in what you do and wants to help you. I stared my chair down. EW has a degree in X and she was hired to do Y that doesn't have anything to do with me. Chair size. Her degree is multidisciplinary and she's more than qualified. This shocked me because it was way out of protocol. There was a pecking order, one that I had followed. I also realized very quickly that if I gave in, I would have no job. I would be shunted off to teach stuff I wasn't qualified to teach. This gave me the courage to resist. And resist I did. Multiple meetings with my chair followed, in which I was painting with the difficult and unsupportive. Honestly, if the woman had had one shred of business teaching in my area, I probably would have succumbed to the pressure. But she was not qualified either by degree, experience, or publications. That made me mad. Meanwhile, an older colleague, who had been terrible to me and made me cry a few times, pulled me aside one day. Apparently she had grown to respect that I wasn't letting the chair bully me. She told me to never verbalize permission for EW to take over any of my classes. Apparently the rules of the school were and are that I was the one who decided who could sub for me or take over for me. I held firm. I was bullied over and over again. One time my chair very nearly physically threatened me and said, why can't you just say it? Chair had no idea I had been tipped off why I needed to say it. I was told by another colleague that EW is bored with her area and doesn't like what she got a degree in, and she only did that area because it's easier to get hired. I said her life choices weren't my problem and stood firm. My chair threatened not to support my tenure, but I actually had a bulletproof application. Chair couldn't do anything. Shunned by many colleagues, some of whom I thought were friends, I was called angry and unreasonable on a good day, a B on the worst. One day this sweet dear lady who had been responsible for hiring EW actually cried an apology saying she was sickened by what was happening to me. EW had been their last choice and the only person they could get. This sweet lovely woman wailed that EW was obnoxious and terrible. She also said that many people in the department supported me but were scared of the chair. She said I should just keep resisting. At least twice I was at school events and when I told the person, both times high up administrators, what I did and taught. They said, oh, I thought EW did that. I had to correct them. So I got tenure and stood firm. Meanwhile, a former student who is now teaching at a community college nearby told me EW is teaching there. He provided me with her bio from their website. Her listed credentials were my credentials. Luckily, that didn't last long. She didn't have the expertise, so I guess the gig just fizzled. One thing I never did was meet with EW. I was asked to so we could hash things out and I said repeatedly that there was nothing to hash. I was happy in my job, and my job wasn't her job. I was always polite and professional if I had to deal with her, but I always avoided any potential traps. They wanted my verbal permission. I wouldn't give it. Finally, the chair stepped down, 
The next chair initially sided with the majority because he didn't know me very well, but then he got to know me and was fair. Eventually, EW stopped trying to do my job. She pushed her way into another area, and now she steers clear of mine. It really did take about 10 years to wear her down. So there was no real dramatic ending. I just held firm and eventually EW gave up. The reason I'm sharing is recently another colleague told me that he always thought EW and Cher were having an affair, and this is why everything happened. Maybe I'm naive, but the thought never crossed my mind. Plus, EW is actually not attractive at all, so I couldn't picture it. Anyway, over the years, whenever EW has done anything terrible or stupid, my colleagues will always share it with me. Still, I actually have little ill will left for her. I won most of the battles and the war, and that's good enough. I still love my job and my students, and I'm glad I fought for it. They say academia is the Game of Thrones without the beheadings. Fair, I think. The second story is, My company is about to lay off my most junior team member. What they don't know is I'm going to quit immediately afterwards in protest. Work in tech, longtime manager. I am a director at a company run on VC money. Our company bought out another company that makes a competing product, and people in the other company started dropping like flies. My team was one person short. We are a .NET dev team located in two countries, and have had trouble filling the role. I'm getting zero feedback from my bosses about anything, much less the plans that they have for the company they just bought. I inherited a developer from the other company, and this lady kicks serious A as a coder. She has only been doing it for a couple of years, but I can tell she'll be a prized resource as soon as she picks up our system. My boss told me last week that I shouldn't get too attached to her, after I gave him my year-end review. So in a nutshell, we bought a company, and apparently it was for their product and phone book. We're going to let everyone go in the company, and maybe ask some of them to reapply. They plan on doing it this week, after everyone has gone into debt buying Xmas presents on credit. I have effing had enough. I know I can get a job just about anywhere. Between my coding and management skills, I can supervise people doing with work while I sleep. And while I know it won't impact my company all that much, I think the big FU will be worth it. We're in the golden age right now, folks. If you feel like your boss is one hair off from being a D, you should just bolt and not put your emotions on the line one more single day. F these guys. Update. Well, that was interesting. Boss calls to let me know that they're setting up a call between the coder and HR at the end of her day today, about 2 p.m. our time. I asked if she was getting a severance package. They said yes, kind of. I said what does kind of mean? They said that since she's not working for us in the United States, she has a month-to-month -month contract, that they're letting her out of the contract on January 1st. I said what reason are they going to give, and he said that they're on a restructuring plan that requires a 10% reduction in costs. Mind you, we were at 95% of EBITA for the year, and have had record growth. I took a deep breath and said, you know what, I've been with this company for only 3 years, but I've been managing people for over 30 years. I've been with good companies and bad. And whenever I see a company do this to qualified workers just to make a buck, I realize that the company's goals no longer align with mine. I'll be drafting my letter of resignation. You'll have it in your email by COB. Long silence. The first question this mf -er asks me is, are you involved with this person? I was flabbergasted. She is 7,000 effing miles away. I said, yeah, I'm involved. I'm her manager and have been guiding her to be a better employee. She's invested in the work. Is everything I've ever asked her to do and more, and you have people in other development teams in your company that have been slacking since you bought us out. I see what their work efforts and output is, and I would keep her over about a half dozen of your long-term team members. He said, well, if this is how you feel, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. I said, that's okay. I hope you have a nicer holiday than the people you're letting go two days before Christmas. I terminate the team session and fire up Word. About 20 minutes later, I get a ping from the parent company head of HR on Slack. He asks me to jump on a video call and I click the link, thinking that it's going to be him and my boss, and they will process me right the F out of here before I get a chance to quit. I was partly right. My boss wasn't on the call. It was just HR, and they were not trying to process me. The guy asked me why I told my boss I was leaving, and I said the exact same thing to him. I told him that I never rose above middle management because I never wanted to make the kind of decision where I had to put perfectly good people out on the street for no other reason than increased profits, and that I would not work for a company that did such things either. They asked me what they could do to keep me there. At this point, I'm thinking they really, really want me to stay around long enough to train my replacement. But Jeebus, this isn't rocket science. Were there any incentives they could offer? I said no, that they have shown me who they are by their actions, and I know that as a manager, they will expect me to uphold their policies, that I can't uphold policies I don't believe in. He asked me to hold off until after Christmas before I made the decision, 
and I said I would consider it. Then I considered it for another 15 milliseconds, wrote the resignation letter, backed up everything on my laptop that I thought I might need and hit send. I'm now relaxing with a nice glass of vodka, contemplating my future. I contacted a couple of companies that had tried to recruit me before we were bought out and told them I was available. I really don't expect to be out of work long. I have savings in Cobra so I know I'll be okay. It really really feels good to tell the a-holes to go F off, even if it hurts a bit financially. Hope all of you have a great Xmas weekend. Edit. January 11th. An old contact reached out to me today and wants me to interview at his company. The job looks like a great fit. WFH, money and benefits are right. If I take it, I'll look to farm out some of my older talent. Never give up, never surrender. And the last story is, I once quit so hard my boss called the cops. I used to work at a cell phone carrier storefront. I'd been there five years. I was a salesperson of the month multiple times and always had good numbers. I had a boss who was brought in as the store manager as part of a college new hire program, despite many in-store employees being way more qualified with life experience in cell phone sales for 15 plus years. Eventually after she ran off many of the veterans I was left to open the store one morning by myself, while the manager was on the floor greeting people. She had the biggest heart on for micromanaging, and always would stand over my shoulder being critical of how long I would take with each customer. She didn't have any work experience so there's that too. She would never open her own register. Well this time I had about a dozen different customers needing help, and they were all lined up waiting and peeved. My boss comes over while I'm trying to go as fast as possible and says in my ear, you're taking too long, you need to move faster. I explained that each customer has specific needs, and I must make sure they are completely satisfied to avoid a bad review call and get written up again. New policy where she would replay our call reviews in team meetings, where we all got to listen to customers tell us how horrible we were, and even assault our appearance. She didn't take a hint, so I turned around and asked her to come with me for a second to the back. She followed me and immediately said, what's the deal? I said, I think I'm done here, I can't work like this. To which she said, if you leave you know you can't come back. To which I simply said, what a poor choice of response. I took out my store keys and handed them to her much to her surprise, and walked out of the store. I turned around and leaned on the public rail, and watched through the window as she tried to deal with all the customers and I smoked a cig. She then went back to the back, pausing helping the customers and called the cops. She then tried to tell them I was loitering and wouldn't leave. She also told them I was harassing the business. The cops arrived and found out the truth, and told her I did nothing wrong, and I was allowed to be there on public property. As she rolled her eyes at the police, I reminded her she's taking too long, and the customers need her. I watched for another 10 minutes and left, F that. I may be petty, maybe, but she could F right the hell off. Thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe.